Okay, so pretty much the worst thing that you ever want to happen when you're leaving uh, for a trip happen. We forgot a bag because I didn't take it out of the closet and didn't really remember to think about it until we were at the airport and it's one of my bags with my supplies. So luckily I have about half of them. Uh, but we just got to the airport. We're really flustered. I'm trying to figure out how to get the rest of my supplies in Mexico. Um, but we just tagged our bags and we're going to drop them off uh, and head to the gate. Um, so this will be an interesting uh, vlog. So I'll show you guys what to do when you are a dumbass like me and forget half your supplies. We went through security, which if you've never gone through security as a wheelchair user before, you have to get patted down um, because you can't go through the metal detector. Jamie, shut your pie hole. Yeah. Jamie's like talking over me. Uh, you have to get patted down. Um, but other than that, it's like pretty easy. You just do whatever you would normally do in the airport. If you're by yourself and you need assistance, there's people everywhere that can help you. Uh, but I'm never allowed to film going through security because you have to drop your phone in the in the thing um, for them to put through the metal detectors and stuff. So I couldn't film that. But yeah, so I'll keep filming as we uh, make our way to Mexico. Me and Jamie are going to get something to eat. Um, we might have a solution for my bag that I forgot. My friend is coming to Mexico in five she days. Is? Oh, five days. We're not going to the same resort, but we could totally meet up with her. So I might get her to go get my bag and just bring it. Um, How so far yeah. away is the resort? It's like it's like forty minutes or something. I'm not coming with you. But we're gonna but we're gonna meet up for our birthdays anyway. So is your birthday in January? <clears throat> you don't know what my birthday is? I thought it's in February. January thirteenth. Okay, guys, I'm on the plane already. Um, it's just like. This day is just going so crazy fast. I couldn't even film at all getting on the plane because um, my family didn't come with me in pre-boarding. Like they just let me on the plane. So there was nobody to film me getting on the aisle chair or anything. And I was like going to the bathroom. So then I was late and then I was like rushing because they were trying to board everybody else on the plane and they were waiting on me. So you guys didn't get to see me getting on the plane, um, but I will try and show you guys me getting off the plane. I chose seats closest to the bathroom um, at the back of the plane instead of at the front of the plane because I would rather be close to the bathrooms and if I have to get on the aisle chair anyway, um, then it doesn't really matter to me how far they wheel me into the plane because um, I'm just getting wheeled anyway. But it's easier to be closer to the bathrooms when I have to go to the bathroom during the flight rather than being wheeled a million miles um, and disturbing a bunch of people while I'm on the flight. So I'm literally like right at the back, uh, right by the washrooms. So hopefully I don't have to, you know, make a big kerfuffle when I have to pee. Down. We made it. When we got to the hotel, the first thing we did was go check out the beach because that's what the kids wanted to do. It was a pretty cloudy day and luckily the only really crappy day we had there. Uh, when we got back to our area of the hotel, it started to rain, which was really crappy for the kids. Uh, so we decided to go check out our hotel room. When we got in there, it was pretty nice and pretty big. The beds weren't very big though, so we had to have a cot that the kids slept on. The bathroom was massive. Uh, the shower was an entirely separate wheel-in shower. And there was a toilet room, which I'm so happy that I could fit in. And then there was a big balcony without even a very big lip to get outside so I could see the beautiful view. After we checked out the room, it stopped raining. So we took a walk along the beautiful paths where there was so many trees and plants and animals. It was crazy. Uh, and then we went to the buffet for supper and we headed to bed.
good morning or afternoon. Uh, we got all settled into the hotel. I had a decent sleep. Uh, we had a few meals. Bring seasoning. <laughs> Bring seasoning. She says the food's bland. Um, it is. You said that too. It turns out once I looked in my supplies that I brought, I have most of what I need for she the trip. She basically has 10 days worth. I just have to go get rubber gloves, so I didn't do bowel routine this morning, so my tummy's a little blue. Um, <clears throat> um, so yeah, we're gonna go into town. Playa and del Carmen. Playa del Carmen, yeah, and get, um, ooh, my arm is tired, I have to put you guys down. We're gonna get uh, gloves, wipes, and then I'll see if I can find a store that sells catheters. So yeah, I'm gonna go catch a bus to Playa, um, and I will catch you guys later. I'll try and take some videos while we're there with my kid's phone because my phone is dead, so I need to leave it in the room, so, bye. We rode into Playa in a taxi, which was really awesome. The taxi driver was super nice, and it was a really fun drive looking at all of the scenery and all of the big resorts on the way. When we got to Playa, we went to the main tourist street, which is 5th Ave, and the first thing that we did was go and get Jamie's hair braided. After that, we went and had lunch, and then after that, we had to go try and find my supplies. I thought it would be an easy walk because I did a little Google map of it, and it said it was about a kilometer and a half. Little did I know that we would be wheeling mostly on the roads in Playa because the sidewalks are not very accessible. We found a couple of sidewalks that had crumbling curbs that doubled as a curb cut and then we got to this giant intersection that we had to cross under this um, overpass and this was a curb cut that we had to go on but luckily underneath the overpass had working curb cuts and we were able to cross the street and there was even a ramp to get up onto the sidewalk and then I got into the medical store where I had to sort of uh, translate with the lady using Google Translate and I was able to find my gloves, no catheters, but gloves. After the medical supply store, we stopped at a pharmacy on our way home to get wipes and they were extremely expensive, but I'm super grateful that I was able to get them in Mexico. And then we headed home in time to have dinner and catch the nightly entertainment, which this night was the fire show, which was super cool. And then after the fire show, we headed to bed and we're ready for the next day. Morning guys, we've been in Mexico for a few days now. We went into Playa the other day, which is the last time I actually think I vlogged, um, like actually talked to the camera before we were going. Um, and I forgot some stuff. So now we're going to go and try and go to Walmart to see if I can get what I need. Cause really the bag that I forgot at home had it didn't have gloves and it didn't have like the pee trays that I pee into at night um, and I've got the gloves we wheeled like a kilometer and a half to a medical supply store which was pretty sketchy um, on the roads in uh, Playa del Carmen but we got there and we got back um, but they didn't have I didn't even think to get those pee tray things and then we got back and I realized I forgot them so it's been really challenging peeing at night because I've been using my daytime pee container and it's like an upright one and it doesn't, it's not, it's just really hard. It has a small mouth, I can't really see when I'm done peeing. So yeah, we're gonna go try and find those today. So I'll try and vlog a little bit while we're going. Uh, I think we're gonna take a taxi. Um, and I'm just taking my GoPro so I don't have a giant camera. So hopefully the sound quality is just turned on because it has voice control. GoPro turn off. It is actually kind of annoying having the voice commands. Um, anyway, I'm just bringing my GoPro so uh, hopefully the sound quality is decent um, in this video because it doesn't have a microphone so uh, yeah, I'll take you guys along as we go to Playa. We headed into Playa in a taxi again and we had the cab driver just drop us off for like an hour and a half and then pick us back up in the same spot. 
We were really only going to Walmart and I wish we had just gone to Walmart the day before when we were trying to get my supplies because it was so cheap. It was basically just like a North American Walmart and it had everything, diapers, wipes, incontinence products. They probably would have had rubber gloves if I would have looked, but I already gotten those so I didn't need to look for them. Uh, but I spent so much money on wipes and stuff like that at the little pharmacies in Playa and I wish I'd just gone here first. I came to the bathroom. I'm lucky that they do have a wheelchair accessible bathroom, but this is what the wheelchair accessible bathroom looks like. It's really huge um, and it's a good try, but here I'll show you. No lock on the door at all. Toilet doesn't have a toilet seat. Um, and a urinal, which is cool. It has a baby change table. Um, sink, no soap. <laughs> and I can't really see in the mirror super well. Yeah, good try though. After we got back from Playa, it was time to hit the pool for the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making my way to the wall slowly. Mom, you're like this, you're like... <laughs> Are you guys swimmed out? The same thing. No, I'm just burning and it's kind of getting colder. Yeah, it's kind of cold now. After the pool, it was time for dinner. We went to an a la carte, which was the Mexican restaurant. And surprisingly, it was not really that good, which is weird for a Mexican resort. And then we headed to another show for the evening, which was Aladdin. I traveled to Mexico with a group of friends, which is the first time I've ever traveled with anybody other than my family, and it was super fun. We all decided to go to Isla Mujeres this day, and Brian, my friend, is also in a wheelchair, which was really neat to be able to go somewhere with another wheelchair user so that I wasn't the only pain in the ass. Uh, but it was fun. We took a, a van on the way there, and then stopped at the ferry and there was a wheelchair accessible bathroom before we got on so that was great. The ferry wasn't super wheelchair accessible. There was a really steep sort of ramp to get on but it was manageable with the people we had there and we made it on and off the ferry just fine. What are we doing James? Uh, I don't know. We just rented a golf cart, uh, put two wheelchairs in the back. And we're gonna tour Isla Mujeres, uh, which is, looks like a really busy little island. We drove around the island for probably about an hour. We did an entire loop of the island. It's really small, so it didn't take us super long. We were able to see what there was to offer around the island, all the restaurants and things to do. And then once we finished the loop, we decided to stop for lunch and try and find a place for me to pee. We stopped for lunch uh, and I took a video of the bathroom at this place. It's La Casa del Tikinixic or something. I can't pronounce it, but it's wheelchair accessible and it has a wheelchair accessible bathroom. It's a nice bathroom, so I took a picture of the place. I'll put a link uh, or I'll put the name of it in the description of this vlog. So if anybody comes to Isla Mujeres, they can find a wheelchair accessible place to go to the bathroom because I didn't think there was going to be any in this town. So yeah, it's La Casa del Tikinixic or something. I don't know. Take a picture of the sign. I did. Yeah, probably. 
we'd have to put Brian and Brittany's chair. East Lemmy Harris. Keep my pants once already, twice already. Oh, East a good day. Well, it's not. It's like it's a, a little It's little like a tiny little awesome. dribble. It's not like no. It's not. I'm not wet. No. no. I'm sitting up front, nerd. Yeah. Okay. You can't sit in the middle. I don't have a. Oh yeah, I do. Ready? I like how they made the yeah. It's funny how they made the goat super long and skinny and like really long, but then the stops just super short. Mm -hmm. You don't go that close. Yeah, you do. Look, look, see. Don't you just love when you get close? Before I forget, come here. I want to put some sunscreen on. All right. We ate lunch on the patio. It was an outside restaurant, so there was no really inside part, and it was super windy, which was kind of annoying because we were right by the ocean, but it was warm, so I guess can't complain too much when you're in Mexico. After we finished eating, I was silly and asked Joe to take me down onto this little dock thingy, but we had to go through a giant amount of sticky sand first, and my tires were just like destroyed. Uh, my hand rims were all covered in sand, so afterwards we had to clean that off before we could leave, which was kind of annoying. Oh, we know where the money is. Yeah. The Adana thing is right here. Oh, yeah. Stopping at Iguana Island to see some iguanas. Mommy, my hair is blowing all over hell. I don't know if you're allowed to, to touch them, though. What, James? I don't know if you're allowed to touch them. Touch the iguanas? I think they're just on an island and they you look at them. Look at her face. She's like lame. Lame. Iguana Island was another pretty wheelchair accessible area of East Lumu Harris. The trails or all the little lookouts were accessible. All of the shops were accessible. I did not try the bathroom, but Brian tried the bathroom and he was able to get in it. There was no toilet seat, so another one of those kind of bathrooms, but there was definitely a cur curb cut to get off the sidewalk. So it's definitely a place that you could check out if you are in Isla Mujeres. After lunch, we spent some more time driving around, looking at things to see, and then after that, we went back to the shopping area, dropped off the golf carts, and then we wheeled around looking uh, at shops and looking for souvenirs. And then before we knew it, it was time to catch the ferry. This ferry was a lot faster than the first one. It was really rocky and wavy which was kind of freaky. I don't know about you, but I am always afraid of water because I feel like if something like this goes down in the middle of the ocean, I'm the first one that's gonna be dead. <laughs> when we got back to the uh, mainland, we got in the van, which is always an ordeal with two wheelchair users. Brian muscled his way into the front seat and then Joe lifted me into the back seat and then we had to stuff the wheelchairs in uh, with the rest of us and we made our way back to the hotel. Don't die! I love Mexico! <laughs> Woo! I spent the first part of my birthday in the pool with my crazy friend Brian who did that crazy jump into the pool. Just hanging out. Uh, my friend Bean came from another resort because she was also in Mexico. So she came and visited our resort so that we could hang out for our birthdays because her birthday was really close to mine. And then the really only thing that I wanted to do while we were on this trip was go to this cave restaurant that I Googled and that looked super, super cool. So Brian 
phoned and made reservations after I tried making them online and it wouldn't work. We took the same van that we took to Isla Mujeres to go to the restaurant and when we showed up we saw this which didn't look like a cave to me so we thought we were being scammed but once we got inside there was a giant staircase down stairs about 30 feet and the workers just brought a chair and it was almost like they knew what to do they just carried brian down in a regular chair and then brought his wheelchair after and then Joe carried me and Bean got carried down the exact same way that Brian did. It was the coolest thing to see all of the workers just do what they had to do and not really ask any questions. There was a language barrier obviously, but they just kind of knew what to do. We got seated at a table and this is what we were dining in. It was legitimately a cave. There were bats flying around. It was the coolest thing. And then I ordered this uh, appetizer that had a cricket on it. Hold yeah. it up, hold it up. Yeah. I want a close up. Oh, you took the less chunky one. Brittany eating a cricket for her birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Are you eating one? Your mom ate it, you can do it. Not much to it? Alright. On the final days that we were in Mexico, I made my kids get up at the crack of dawn so that they could catch at least a few sunrises because you can't go to Mexico and not see that view. You don't like the ocean? Huh? You got your pants on? I'll take a shower again. Oh, well that's a horrible thing. I just took one. Jamie did clearly not appreciate the view. Uh, Jacob didn't mind though. He he was out in the ocean looking at crabs and shells and stuff. And then we headed back. This boardwalk was something that we found on like one of the very last days. I didn't realize that I could see the ocean this well. And then uh, my friend Terry found this boardwalk while he was walking around and even though it's not totally wheelchair accessible, he had to bump me up and down these two steps. It was pretty good and was a very good view. And then we spent the last couple days just enjoying the pool and all of the amazing animals that were on this resort. There was monkeys, as you can see. There were deer that I had never really known were in Mexico and they were so beautiful and dainty. There were these weird little raccoon thingies that were all over the garbages. So those were my favorite, but the wildlife was incredible. I thought I should probably update you uh, on some of the things that I talked about at the very beginning of this vlog, AKA forgetting half of my supplies. So the things that I was missing were half of my catheters and I carried lots of catheters just in case anyway. So I had one pack of wipes, I had no gloves, I had one thing of muco jelly, which is my lubricant, um, and I think that was it. So I just really needed wipes. Oh, and I didn't have my pee trays that I pee into at night. Um, so that was really annoying because I had to figure out how I was going to pee at night and into what. So the first few days were really stressful. I was able to like get the things that I really needed, you know, soon in town. And then my next sort of like stress was getting my catheters and I looked for the catheters at the medical supply store and they did actually have a a few boxes of catheters but they were really short ones they were like the really short female ones and i don't pee on the toilet if you've ever seen a video of mine where i pee um i pee in my wheelchair with a zipper in the crotch of my pants and i pee into a container so i had to get longer ones if i was going to get any at all but then when i got home i decided i'm just going to count how many catheters i have and divide it by how many days i still have left here and see how many that gives me and it basically gave me like um 
nine catheters a day, between eight and nine catheters a day, I think, which is a lot for most people. That would be like oodles of catheters, but I pee a lot and I drink a lot. So it was like, eh, just cutting it close. Because normally I bring 10 to 15 catheters a day to just be like super, super safe. Uh, so I was going to have to monitor how much I drank. And so for the next few days, I was trying to, to only use six to seven catheters a day so that I had lots of catheters for the end of my trip, which would be less stressful. And so that I would have um, lots of catheters for the day that we were going home. So I, I rationed catheters, which was kind of stressful because I'm not used to taking so long or, or having so much time in between my peas. Um, and that was just uncomfortable for me. It wasn't like super crazy. It was just uncomfortable to drink less in a hot place and pee less. I was still probably drinking twice as much as what like normal people drink. But anyway, I made it through, I rationed, so I didn't have to find catheters uh, after all in Mexico. A couple of shitty things that happened on the trip. Um, my computer broke, so normally I would have put a video out while I was here, but my computer broke. I plugged it into an outlet outside on the balcony and I don't know what happened, if it overheated or there was like moisture in the outlet, but something happened and my computer got like fried. Uh, so I have to go home and buy a new computer, which that's, kind of annoying um what else I've been peeing my pants a lot here uh which is really annoying because I normally don't pee a whole bunch at home and I've peed a lot here so I don't know if it's just like the change in whatever I don't know what, what it is but that's been stressful a few of the days um but obviously I'm not going to let it ruin my trip because I just changed my poise pad and move on really praying that I'm not getting a UTI because that would be really sucky for the trip home. So I'm taking lots of D-mannos. I'm eating garlic every day um, and just sort of keeping with my drinking schedule so that that doesn't happen. Uh, but yeah, definitely not like everything hasn't been like, you know, rainbows and sunshine. There's been definitely hard things during the trip because it's always unknown uh, when you go to a different country and being with a bunch of able-bodied people. Luckily, I'm with another wheelchair user and that makes me feel less alone and less like a burden. Uh, but I've experienced that feeling a few times on this trip because my kids are older now and they're able to do a lot more physically than they were when we traveled last time. And I feel like I'm hindering some of the fun things that they're able to do. My family is actually at um, Shell Ha today. Uh, it's like a water park near Playa del Carmen and uh, it's like a nature water park. Like it's got like lazy rivers to float on and zip lines and things like that. It's got a really big water slide. Um, so they went and did that without me and it was a decision I made not to go just because there should be some things that my kids are allowed to share with their dad um, that are able-bodied things that are, you know, just easier when I'm not around. And not that I don't want to be there and that I won't go ever, but sometimes there are things that are funner and that's just a reality. I'm not like knocking my disability or, you know, saying that like people with disabilities make things less fun, but there are things that are more enjoyable when there's not somebody that you have to cart around. It's just a, a freedom that you get to enjoy being able to go um, on all of the things without having to worry if somebody is going to be able to get there and how you're going to get there. And my kids and my husband are the ones that have to do that for me. And I appreciate it so much. I'm so grateful for everything that they do for me when we go out places and they don't ever make me feel like shit about it. Um, but it's just a reality. So sometimes I choose to stay home and sometimes I choose to go. And this was one of the things that I was like, you know what, it's just going to be a lot funner and more enjoyable. And the memories are going to be, um, you know, m more free, I guess. They'll be more present in the moment with their own uh, fun and, and activities if I'm not there. So I chose, chose to stay home, which my husband sent me pictures and I'm a little sad watching all the things that they're doing, but I'm not necessarily sad that I'm not there. I'm sad that I it's hard for me to be there. I'm sad for me and I'm sad for you and I'm sad for everybody that has a mobility challenge that prevents them from fully participating in some of the things that there are to do in this life. And, you know, we just have to swallow that sometimes and it's really hard. Uh, so I'm a little sad and uh, I'll be okay. And I'm going to be, I'm obviously a little like sad, so I'm uh, getting a little emotional, 
but I can't wait to hear about the trip when my kids get home and I'm gonna be so happy for them that they got to experience that um, so yeah if you are feeling this way like you can't fully experience some of the things with your family members or the people that you love you're not alone and uh, and it's hard and there's like the grief and joy all at once where you're just like I'm so sad that I can't be there with you and I'm so happy that you get to experience all of the things in this life that I don't get to experience um, with my legs so uh, anyway, that was just me telling you some of the things that were really hard on this trip. Uh, some of the things that were really amazing on this trip, I'm going to do a full review of this hotel. The accessibility out here is really great. We're at the Grand Riviera Princess, and uh, it's a huge hotel. I've never been at a hotel this big, so stay tuned for the actual full review of this hotel, the accessibility features, all that stuff. Um, but the bathrooms have been really great. Um, the accessibility is just awesome. Uh, other than people being in the accessible stalls in the bathrooms, the bathrooms are beautiful. Like, they're awesome. Um, and it's been really, really good uh, here. So that's awesome. Anything that we've gone and done, it's been really great. We went to Isla Mujeres. It was great. Um, Playa del Carmen was great. People were great. And I was able to get around and mostly pee where I needed to. A few times I had to, like, figure stuff out. But, like, the highlight of my trip, I want to say, is the cave dinner that I went on. Um, amazing, expensive, so don't expect to like go there and eat a cheap cheeseburger because I think it costs $350 US for my family to eat there, um, but worth every penny. Like it was such a cool experience. So that was the highlight of my trip, I think, and really just making memories, spending time in the pool, being here with friends. Um, I'm here with my friend Crazy Brian, um, who you can see on Push on CBC. Uh, with me and my other friends and um, it's been a really cool experience being here with another wheelchair user because normally I travel alone with my family so um, yeah I loved it and my other friends that are here they're part of Brian's life and now I've become friends with them Carla and Terry they're his best friends um, they're really nice too and they're so helpful so used to helping a wheelchair user already so it's just second nature for them to to be helpful and uh, that's also really nice because when you're with somebody that is used to helping you, used to pushing when you need it, used to just doing the things that you need without it being a big deal, it makes you feel so much better uh, and less like a piece of shit because sometimes you can feel like a piece of shit when you're in a wheelchair and feel like you are ruining everybody's experience by making it more difficult uh, and that's not the case, it's really not, they don't care but it's hard not to feel like that. Um, and it's a reality, so I just wanted to be honest about that part. I definitely have felt like a burden, and I feel like I'm dragging my family down a lot, um, even though they tell me I'm not, and even though, you know, my kids want me around all the time. It's just hard not to feel like that. It's just something that you experience as a uh, person with a disability, and it will probably will never go away. It's just one of those asshole things in your brain that you have to ignore. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to give you an update of what was going on. We are going to pack up tonight and hopefully be pretty organized for tomorrow. I apologize that I wasn't able to get very much footage in the airport because every trip is sort of hectic. So if I'm able to get a better sort of rundown of how things go in the airport, I'll do a separate video on sort of the things that I do in the airport and how I pee on the plane and all that stuff, even though I've done a video before. Um, but I don't know if we'll be able to get video. It's just really hard in a crowded plane to get my kids up to also film, to get them to film Joe putting me in the bathroom and just hectic. So I wanted to update you. I'm not sure whether this will be the end of the vlog um, because tomorrow is going to be pretty hectic. But if I don't update you, thanks for hanging out with me. And I hope you enjoyed this vlog and I will catch you on another video. Bye guys. AV, how you liking your new wheelchair? Love it. It's the best. It's so it's, good. It's like going from a Ferrari to a freaking 1974 Pinto. Okay, now stop doing the wheelie and like wheel away a little bit because you look ridiculous from behind. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny.
Okay, so the the door froze shut um, on the airplane, and we had to use airport wheelchairs, which their philosophy is save money, one size fits all, and it's just it's just hysterical. What I don't understand is why not just put us both in the same one? Yeah. <laughs> like, we could literally, yeah, yeah, just two for one.